Oh, a typical short passage construction. The free starts are being drilled from one completed tunnel toward the other, and then the excavation will start from the opposite tunnel. Uh, this slide uh, shows uh, short passage construction sequence uh, for the Vector Shell tunnel. Uh, this was one of the first tunnels you, uh, which used uh, ground treating for the short passage con construction. On the left side, uh, one can see the freeze pipe system or the whole freeze system with all the connecting lines to, to the freeze pipes. And on the right side, one can see the opening in the special segment liner and the temporary bulkhead. So this excavation sequence has the following advantages. On one hand, uh, the excavation cannot damage any of the freeze pipe installations, which is secured on the left side. And also, the breakthrough on the left side uh, on the drilling tunnel will only be done once the final, or not the final, once the lighting has been installed completely. That is the advantage that a temporary bulkhead for safety reasons is only required on one side, on that side where the excavation usually starts. So this just repeats what I've said previously. Here one can see uh, a typical drilling unit which was used at the Western Shell Tunnel. In this case, um, the, the diameter of the tunnel was large enough that the train traffic for the TBM tunneling operation could be uh, maintained during the uh, freezing of, uh, during the drilling operation. That, of course, depends uh, on the size uh, of the diameter. In other cases, uh, the drilling can only be done um, once the tunnel drive, the TBM tunnel drive, uh, has been finished, of course, if the diameter is not large enough to allow for drilling and tunneling. Uh, one very important uh, issue is uh, that the drilling has to be done against uh, high water pressure, this is the Vector Shell Tunnel, uh, and this was in an extremely high depth. The water depth was 60 meters, so one can assume that is a pretty high water pressure, and so the operation had to be safe at all time drilling through the lining segments. So usually uh, for these cases, uh, provisions should be made in the lining segments. So pipe inlets should be installed, as one can see in the upper um, picture. Uh, and once all the lining segments are being installed and the drilling uh, operation will start, then a so-called stuffing box or better a blowout preventer can be fixed to the pipe inlet, and then the drilling can be done in a very safe way. Once the drilling uh, is finished, one can see here the final uh, pipe inlet in its final state. So all drillings for this Lester Shell Tunnel have been um, executed and finished uh, extremely safe. There was not a single case of blowout or leakage or something. And one has to consider uh, that uh, 26 cross packages have been constructed as a lesser shell tunnel using this approach. Um, these are typical freeze pipe layouts, and the freeze pipe layouts, uh, uh, the installation of the freeze pipes, and uh, whether a scaffolding is being used or not, that pretty much depends on the diameter. Of, of the, the tunnel, so on the right side, the Lester Shell Tunnel with a diameter of uh, inside diameter of roughly 10 meters was available, so a scaffolding could be used. On the left side, it was a Heron Tunnel, uh, also a road tunnel, but with a smaller diameter, so all of the lines were directly uh, placed at the lining segments. On both cases, one can really see uh, the most important insulation in the area of the ground freezing, and this insulation uh, has to be installed, of course, in both tunnels. 
Um, these are typical freeze units which can be used inside of a tunnel. Uh, it's just a normal container size, as one can see on the left side. This is also a freeze unit uh, which was used for the West Shell tunnel. Um, so one of these units was required for a frost passage uh, with an excavation diameter of 4 meters uh, with a length of roughly 15 meters, 1.5 meters and uh, with a fall and fall thickness of uh, approximately two meters, just to give you an idea what capacity uh, is required. Flood protection. Um, that is uh, always a major concern, the safety, of course, as we are dealing with uh, very high water pressures. Um, I've already talked about how safe uh, ground freezing is uh, for for uh, construction of cross passages, um, so that uh, a failure cannot happen immediately. However, as an additional safety measure, flood protection uh, is required. So usually, uh, installation of bulkhead doors or flood gates uh, are being done at each cross passages at the tunnel site where the excavation starts. Um, as I mentioned previously, the final breakout, final breakout of a segmental lining at the other tunnel tube will only start when the final lining is in place, which gives additional safety. Um, the monitoring of the ground freezing operation ensures that the salt inflow cannot happen suddenly. So if something unexpected will happen, it can never happen immediately. So it will be indicated by temperatures, so that means it will always be sufficient time to close the bypass door. Um, yes, again, frozen soil and foam connection must and will be 100% watertight. And in case any unexpected leakages occur, the bypass has to be closed immediately and kept closed until the leakage will be stopped. Here are uh, in examples for typical flood protections. On the left side, again, the left of Shell Tunnel, there is a floodgate open, which you can see on the left side. So it just slides down from the top to, to the bottom. That gives the advantage because uh, just due to its own very heavy weight, it will slide down very safely. On the right hand, one has to handle a little bit more the steel bypass to get it closed here, but both uh, are examples as the flood protection can be executed. The excavation is done using the shot read method, as one can see here. Uh, on the left side, one can see the access to the open bypass. Uh, rotary milling head is used to excavate the frozen soil because the frozen soil, even though only a frozen soil ring cylinder is being designed, usually the soil in the middle also freezes. One case history, the left Shell tunnel, that was the construction of two road tunnels driven by TDM below part of the North Sea, which is also part of the Atlantic. The length was 6.6 kilometers. Uh, in total, 26 cross passages had to be constructed and using ground freezing. And the special conditions here were the very high depth of 20 to 60 meters and, of course, the related uh, high water pressure. And here, the execution uh, uh, had to be done while maintaining the TBM drive, which was possible because of the large diameter of the TBM. So here you have already seen that picture. Um, so the diameter was excavation diameter roughly four meters. Twenty-two free parts were installed with a spacing varying between 0 0.9 up to 1.1 meter. The design for the fall thickness was two meter, which was sufficient enough to take all the loads even under a pressure of 60 meter water loads. Um, that really shows uh, how uh, useful ground feeding is, also for structural reasons. The initial shot tree lining was designed to 25 centimeters, and the permanent lining was 40 centimeters. Now some 
Any questions? Sure, and while the audience is answering that, perhaps, Helmut, you could answer a question that we had come in. Um, you mentioned that for cross passages, shotcrete would be the method of choice for additional support. Is a special shotcrete mixture required, and how does the freezing affect the setting time of the shotcrete? Uh, that is always a, a major concern uh, using the, or to apply the shot treats. Uh, no, there is no special mixture required for, for the shot treat, just a regular mixture which is being used for shot treat. And the shot treat can be sprayed directly on the surface of the frozen soil. The only thing uh, one really has to consider um, that the outer five centimeters of the shot treat cannot be considered for the structural uh, design of the shot tree. So let's say if a, a structural thickness of 20 centimeters is required for the shot tree, one has to apply 25 centimeters, and that is because the, that is the temperature influence from the so frozen soil to the shot tree, and a lot of measures have, have, uh, have proved that the influence of the, the, the minus temperatures is only in the outer two or three centimeters. So one is on the safe side to consider uh, the outer five centimeters as uh, not uh, acting for the structural reasons. Okay, thank you. And since it looks like we have time for one more question, um, perhaps, Mike, you could jump in and answer this one. Um, water expands when frozen. Do you get an increase in soil volume? And if so, how is that mitigated to prevent damage to above ground structures or alternatively settlement following thaw? That's a, that's a very good question because it's an, an issue that comes up and it's a little bit of a complex the answer to the question because it's a the expansion of the, the water does or the expansion of uh, ice does increase the pressures that might be put onto a structure, but the res the amount of let's say heave if you're worried about heave that occurs is very much a function of the soil type that's being frozen. What we see typically in sands and gravels, for example, is that the, the Water that freezes does not tend to heave sand and gravels as much as it does things like organic silts. Organic silts are the ones that cause us the most problems and are the ones that uh, will create some heave pressures. Now, when analyzing this, the you know we always are looking at how the what the overburden pressures are to withstand the you know exerted pressures from the heaving. So it's really a function of the soil type, the overburden pressures, the amount of pressure that's uh, that's exerted by the frozen soil body. And these are things that we, we can do tests in the laboratory so that we can estimate what kind of difficulty it will have during construction. Typically in a cross passage situation, that's not going to be an issue, but in other closer to surface applications, that, that, would, be, that would be a concern. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I think you covered uh, pretty much uh, everything. So um, I might just to add. So in in case one really has only granular soil, uh, so sand or gravel, uh, there has uh, to be no concern at all about uh, freezing uh, deformation or frost deformation, uh, frost heat pressure, or something like that. It's only really only related to frost susceptible soil. But as you uh, explains or one can really design for that. Great, thank you. I think the polling results have now come in, so if you want to move forward with the presentation. So, uh, successful projects. Um, Ground freezing using or cross passages construction using ground freezing has really become a standard method. So a lot of projects have already been successful uh, finalists using ground freezing for, for cross passages construction. Here is a list of all the projects uh, where only we have been involved. There were 